What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over menu sounds and sound effects. So this is a pretty simple episode, but it is important. Sound effects and music really bring life to the game. And I figured we could use a simpler one after the input window episode that was last week. That was very, uh, <laughs> there's a lot going on in that one. So we're going to take it a little bit easier today and just go over some menu sounds and how I implemented them because you can put them in a bunch of different ways, but uh, there's certain spots that I put them in for this tutorial series because, you know, we don't want sounds to be overlapping each other and different things like that. So I have them on the press any key screen. I have them changing um, selections on the main menu. I have them confirming selections on the main menu. And we have them going from different characters on the main menu, or on the character select screen, excuse me. And it works for both player one and player two. For confirming selections on the character selection screen. I didn't put anything for changing colors yet, but you could do that as well. Probably should. Proceeding to the stage select. And then going through the options here and making a, a decision here. Cool. So you can do this for all your menus. We're going to be adding many more menus because we need options. Um, we're going to need probably a few additional things for if we do story. Then we're going to want to have dialogue or different things and maybe pre you know confirming through that will be something. Maybe you need sound effects for your pause menu, different things like that. So we have plenty of options here. I'm going to basically show you what I've done to set this up, and then we can kind of just follow this throughout the rest of the series. I will start including sound effects as we make new menus, so it's going to just be integrated in. But I'm going to show you where we added them on these screens in particular, because these screens are a little bit more advanced. Um, not so much the press any key screen, but a lot of the other screens, they have a lot of things going on. So I want to make sure there's no issues with your sound effects. First things first, if you haven't watched any episode of this tutorial series, then you might want to catch up. I'll leave a link to the entire playlist right here. But I will also leave a link to some of the menu episodes here. Because if you haven't watched these, I'm going to be building off the logic that's in here. This is going to be one of the simplest episodes ever, though, as we're pretty much only ever going to use Play Sound 2D. And I'm going to add a Boolean in a few spots. So in the press any key screen, which looks like this, we play a sound when the user presses any key. We have an event that's bound to the any key menu option. And I just want to play a sound when that happens. I play it before I do anything else because our menus are going to have animations. You can see that we already have the text kind of uh, bobbing up and down. But we're also going to want to have transitions between our pages, not just add to viewport and remove from parent. So because of that, I want to play the sounds in a particular spot. I want to play them at the start, as soon as a, a key is pressed. Because then we can do whatever animation we want, whatever. We don't have to wait for it and think that it's, you know, hope that it's not delayed or on the wrong screen or anything. If we do it right away, we'll play the animation after and we'll be in good shape. That's why I've left this little spot open. This would be like play animation. So just play sound 2D and then choose your sound type. And just to show you, it's actually that simple. You can just play sound 2D. You can open it up and change all these different settings about it. You don't actually have to though for pretty much any of this. You have volume, pitch, start time, concurrency settings, and owning actor. I just chose my sound, I chose start, and went on with my day. All right, let's go to the main menu screen. This one's a little bit more complex because we have moving and we have confirming, and we have sounds for both. So if we go to the event graph, now I'm gonna handle these things pretty much the same way every single time, but it is important to note it will be different depending on if you have one player on a menu or two players. My main menu is intended to only have one player. There's nothing wrong with having two players. 
but two players just aren't needed. Really, one player would be the only one whose input matters here. And probably you don't even have a second player signed in here. Or if, if they're signed in, they're not actually able to control anything anyway. So this one's simpler than the character select and stage select screens. All we're going to do for this is I'm going to add a Boolean on our move selection border. Long story short, in our event construct, we bind our actions for the controls. Like if we can move up, down, or confirm. Because of that, we have this thing called move selection border. We're not using the default Unreal logic for navigation because we want a little bit more control. But because that's the case, um, we need to make sure that when we are over a specific spot, we perform the correct logic. To, so to get this menu started, I make sure that I call move selection border at the start of the menu. And that way I highlight the initial button that the character should be on or the player should be on. Because of this, um, if, if I put play sound 2D in here, every time we move, it's going to play a sound as soon as we enter the menu. I don't actually want that because we already have our start sound for leaving the press any key menu. If you left the press any key menu and there was a sound and then there's a sound as soon as you get on this menu, it really is just too much. It sounds little, but it would be a little bit off and we don't want that. So instead, there's a very simple solution. If you click on the move selection border function call or just find it in your function list, then you can add a Boolean, new parameter. I called it play sound effects. Okay, so you just add this new parameter, make it a Boolean, call it whatever you want, play SFX sound effects. And really what this does is it determines if we should play the sound effect when this action is done. The only time we don't want to play it is in the construct. Because this is a forced move selection, and we don't want to play the sound effect. So I just leave it unchecked. The only other place you call this function, and in case it's different for you, feel free to right click and find references. It'll show you all the places you call it. I call it in move selection at the end. So if you've been following the series, this is where you'll call it as well. We do want to call it here. This means that the user moved the, the selection and we do want to make the sound then. And then here's the actual function. So, And all we want to do is this. Um, in the past, this function was set up the same way that it is now. These two nodes are the only ones that are new. So we were using this selection to go into the switch statement. All I've done is use the Boolean that we've now put in this function, performed a branch off of it. If it's true that we want to play the sound effect, then we play sound 2D. And then go to the switch statement. If it's false, we skip the sound, but we still go to the switch statement because we still want that logic. And that's all you need for the main menu. Now, the character select and level select or stage select are a little bit more complex, but really they're the same thing in theory. We just have to change our logic a bit because um, the way they work is, is a little bit more advanced regarding the fact that they have two players. So, in the event graph, same deal. We set up our listen for input actions, but this time we call move selection for player one and player two based on if we, you know, move right, move down, all these different things. So instead of calling it through a separate function or queuing input and calling the function, passing it along, we call these uh, move selections at each different input action. Because of that, we need to add the Boolean to the move selection function instead of the move selection borders function. It's a small change, but it does make a difference. So let me show you why we have to do this. Well, we don't have to do this, but let me show you why it's the solution I went with. Here's move selection border. This is what determines, again, all of our stuff for where what character is highlighted by the box and all that stuff. Now, that's wonderful. But... If we do the same thing we did in the main menu, where we have this Boolean on move selection border, so find move selection border, you see I have a Boolean that says play sound effects, just like we did on the main menu. And I do the same thing. In this function, I check the branch. 
If it's true, we play a sound effect. If it's false, we go to the switch. We're, even if we play the sound effect, we still go to the switch. So that one's pretty simple with how that works. But the problem with this is now we're calling move. So move selection calls move selection border. And we're not, uh, we need to make sure that we're calling move selection on event construct as well. Because we don't want to just move the border, we actually want to move the users to this uh, box. Without getting too deep into it, basically when the menu is made, I have it set up to where we want to go into the menu and our character shows up for the first character. Now if, char if player 2 was also on a character, it wasn't a locked screen, their character would also be here. That is my intended functionality. So I have to use move selection instead of move selection border because I want the characters to pop up. All we do is we use move selection, click it, just like move selection border, add a boolean, play sound effects, and pass it the whole way through. See that? So we use the move selection to go through and to the play sound effects on move selection border. On the event graph, only during construct, we don't play sound effects. Every other time we call it, player one or player two, we have play sound effects checked. There you go. And lastly, we have to do this for the stage selection as well, but it's pretty much the exact same method. Uh, so we need to, in the event construct, we have this logic at the very end where we call move selection. As with the other time, I need to call move selection here because I want to update the stage preview in the background. But move selection calls move selection border. So guess what we have to do? In move selection and move selection border, make a boolean, play sound effects. If it's the one on event construct, we don't play sound effects. It's unchecked. Otherwise, if player one or player two made an action, we play the sound effects make them all checked and then we go into move selection we drag the boolean down into the move selection border then move selection border does the same thing we did for all the other menus I'm trying to keep these as similar as possible so it's as easy to understand as it can be where we take a we do the branch if it's true we play the sound effect and then we go to the switch if it's false we just go to the switch all this stuff it seems you know, not important. Seems weird that I'm even covering it in that much depth, but it is important because every single time that you go to a new menu, you know, you don't want random sounds playing. You want the sounds to feel like they mean something. There's a few other places we want to play sounds as well. So I'll cover, I'll cover those, but those are the complex ones. So we want to play them when we back out of a menu. So if we're in the stage select, we either return to character select by pressing the return button on the controller or keyboard, or we press the back button that's actually in the game, like with the mouse, then we want to play the sound right here. You can also play a sound on the continue button or when you go to start the match. This won't actually make a sound right now because we don't have level streaming. So this goes to fire and then it starts opening the level and this just never has time. But you'll notice as we get level streaming and different things in, we can play sounds there perfectly fine. So for now, ignore that. Feel free to leave it in if you want. I'm going to leave it here as an example. And we'll use it when we get to level streaming. Character select screen. If we go back there, it's the same stuff as the stage select, really. So whenever we either return to the main menu so or press the back button that's actually on the screen, we play sound 2D. We do it as... Uh, specifically when the stage select screen is not up, meaning that this is just the character select screen up. We don't have the stage select screen up at the moment. Otherwise, we would play the sound twice if we did it uh, either way. We want to make sure the stage select screen is not up. This one you will be able to hear if you go into your continue button or go to level select, which is, I believe, enter on my keyboard. You can see I play sound 2D after all their things are set. It, this doesn't really matter too much the order, just as long as it's after is stage select screen up false. 
I just happened to do it here because I wanted to do it before the level select screen widget was up. Cool. And that's all I got for you today, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I told you today's episode would be pretty simple, but it is a fun one. I love sound effects and I love music. And I want to start putting these in. I was trying to put in things that I thought would be useful. Don't really want to cover the music yet since we're not going to be going over level streaming for a few more episodes. But the sound effects we can definitely do because it doesn't hurt anything to have them in. And this is the final way we'll actually leave them. We may make it a little bit more advanced, but what we have in there isn't necessarily going to change. So if you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for the channel than anything else I, anything else you can do. <laughs> and I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for continuing to believe in me. And I'm very, very happy to keep working on this series. I can't wait to see where we can bring it. If you had any issue with any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community for free assistance. And that's all I got for you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.